Hello, I hope this finds you well. It is a overcast, but the sun's trying to peek through Wednesday morning here in Hertfordshire in the United Kingdom. My name is Kat. If I haven't met you before, it's lovely to meet you. If you are back, it's lovely to see your face again. Um, how are you doing? How is life? I hope it's good. I am, if in truth, I'm under the weather today not feeling very good, I have a bit of a, a, a sore throat, but I hope that I'm past the worst of it now. I spent all of yesterday in bed and I have a lovely cup, I say cup, it is a pint tankard of uh, a herbal blend called Magic Potion, which was a lovely gift from a friend called Alan. Um, and it's got sort of calendula and cornflowers, rosemary, rose, uh, blackberry leaves but it's a very nice blend I will take my the bag out of it shortly but I just want to let it brew for a bit I hope that you have something comforting or nourishing with you too or some good feline animal company or human company and maybe even a project or two to keep you busy too um yeah it's been a while. I had a week off. Alex went away and took the camera and rather than trying to think of, you know, planning ahead or anything, I have got a little bit of fun projects pre-filmed that I'm sort of slowly working through. But rather than like trying to get something out or using my camera, I was like, you know what? Treat yourself. And now I'm kind of thinking I should have just tried to do something and had this week off. But I really wanted to sit down and share my projects with you. I've been really finding comfort and joy in knitting lately and oh, I'll just shove on some leggings and get cosy and I have done exactly that and I've taken to the sofa which I don't tend to do but I've got to say it's nice to sit up here. I have my socks <laughs> that a bit fluffy, um, that my aunt made for me. We all call them Jenny socks and that's what they are. Um, I don't know what recipe she uses. I think it's just like she just has the similar vanilla sock recipe that she uses over and over again, like many of us do. Um, and I'm wearing my Vapu jumper that I just wear all the time and in the house and it's definitely drew, first of all, a wash, but also a gleam um, to make it look a little bit more fresh. But as I always say, I really love this thing. It is knitted using Drops Silk Alpaca, held double. It felted very quickly, but it's holding up as scraggly as it looks. I love it. It's like my, you know, it's almost like wearing one of Alex's jumpers. It's that cosy and makes me feel good. So this is the Vapu and I'm also wearing a improvised beanie hat. Um, it's a one by one rib hat. I knit these things quite a lot and I just have, you know, I know what, roughly where my gauge is at so I can cast on with confidence. Um, and it's just improvised and then the little decrease at the top. I did this one quite long so I could fold it multiple times if I wanted to, either thick or do them thinner but I just shoved it on today because I really enjoy a hair wash and all of those things but also it's quite cold in this house so I am comfortable I'm cozy I've got a hot drink I've shared what I'm wearing um I have a finished project I have it woven in the ends and it's because I thought I would film sooner that I haven't gone to put them on so I haven't thought about weaving in the end if that makes sense but I'm very happy with these Ugh. um I did have a lot of fun knitting them but these are the Thursday night socks by Lindy Lindy Lindsay who is sock witchery on Instagram and they are inspired by critical role and if you aren't up to date woof and if you are up to date woof I keep just wanting to scream. I'm not going to share any spoilers, but wow. Um, yes, so I might, well, I definitely, I just want to cast another pair of these on. I really enjoyed knitting on them. 
The stitch pattern is very Moorish. It is something I'm quite familiar with, but I had never knit it on socks. I did modify these to be my preference. So I love to do toe up socks. I am currently knitting a cuff down pair. And whilst it's not, I'm not upset. I've, I had, I've had probably as much practice both methods now. Um, I do, I do prefer toe up, but I'm still having fun knitting them top down. So cuff down, not toe up. Um, but I did modify these. These should have a longer leg. I, so this is just sort of roughly my preference. Um, and I am already thinking forward to sandal and sock season, which I might start doing soon, even though it has been way too cold to be doing that. Um, I did my normal wedge toe. I did a short row heel again. It's kind of my preference. I really love a gusset. I love the shaping on it and like a, a big legal heel as well. But I don't have any fit issues with a short row heel. And because life is life, this is a very good heel for me to just do without any thinking. No planning. Just I know exactly where I need to do it. I know, know how much... How much like, I know how much it adds to the length and the leg length. Um, but other than that, I didn't do any modifications. Um, I lie. I did a one by one cuff, not a two by two cuff. Um, I do like the look of a two by two cuff, but I don't know. This was just my vibe because I really love when a one by one cuff is folded. Um... Yes, so I really like them. They are a lovely pair of comforting socks to knit and I do think the way they've been written is nice, especially if you're familiar with socks. It's, you know, you whiz through them quite quickly. Uh, the yarn is... Are you coming up? Come on. We've got a little feline familiar coming here. Do you want to come and sit up here? She's like, yeah, but I would rather sit on your knitting. I know. Here. Come on. Audrey. While we're, while we're distracted, I'll take this out of here. So it doesn't go too strong. That's what she wanted. I don't think she was convinced that she was allowed, but she is. I'll show you it unfolded with this, give you a little bit of a better look at the yarn. <laughs> These also haven't been washed. I, I wasn't that precious about it. I, I try my best, but here it is in the ball. And it is Betrayal on the Yak Sock Base by Chromatic Yarns. It was December's Yarn Club. I also wanted to wait a bit of time just in case people hadn't received theirs yet. Oh, she's just put a little paw on my thigh. Oh, thank you. I am blessed. Um, it is 70% superwash merino, 20% yak and 10% nylon. And there is 400 meters to 100 grams. It is a really gorgeous base. I enjoyed working with it, it's got a really nice twist to it, beautiful stitch definition and I really want to use this for something special um, but I think I could get another, well, I can definitely get another pair of socks out of it but whether I put it into something else I'm not sure. Should we angle this down a little bit so you can be seen? I do this and then I'm really uncomfortable but you're gorgeous. I'll get her into the frame for you. <laughs> Are you in the camera now? Yes. Not the most perfect view of her, but nevertheless, she is still now part of part of the video. Um. 
feel like this could be a really long one if I carry on like I am, but I, I've got to say I really do want to come back to being a bit more slow and talking about the process a bit more when I am talking about these projects. I know that I think I've... I, that was a mouthful. I feel like I have started to speed up a bit and part of that was um, camera. <laughs> I have a half an hour slot and for some reason rather than pressing the button I often forget and start speaking lap, uh, faster and the same with batteries but all the batteries are fully charged and I'm doing better to remember to do so now so we can take our time we can take the time we need and share it at hopefully a more comfortable pace um, I have one test net on my needles at the moment and I will wait only because I didn't check and it's not a secret test knit, but I'm not sure if they want projects to be shared just yet. So I'm just going to hang fire um, and just talk about whips. And I'm going to share this one first because it is one that a lot of people have knitted. And for a long time, I wasn't that fussed about trying the project. But now, having knitted it, I understand why so many people enjoy it. And this... <laughs> this one might not be my last. Alex has actually cast one on himself, which is quite cool. And obviously it's going to take him a long time, but it will be nice for him to have a project like this on the needles that doesn't really require any thought as such. Because I think one side he's going to do it, he's going to basically knit it the same as mine, so one side is going to be in one colour, and then the other side is gonna be uh, dice rolls and I'll show you quickly before before I keep talking about it and we'll make sure we do this right <laughs> Audrey really likes this project too so this is the one side it is just a big alpaca triangle and I say big it is huge. I haven't measured, but it really is huge. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah, it doesn't fit on screen. Um, and I, I did this bit as suggested. I followed the instructions for the s stripes half and half wrap, I believe it is. H stripes half and half triangle wrap? by Pearl Soho. It's a very popular pattern and there is a plain version and a striped version. I took the numbers from the striped version and cast on without stripes for the first side, like the first triangle. The construction uses short rows, so you're casting on the longest length and then you're knitting back and forth, back and forth, shortening the rows until you have one triangle and then you do the same, do another triangle, and the rows get longer on the opposite side. Once I had done my first triangle, I actually ended up deciding, because I am using... I, I don't want to say oddments or scraps, because I do have a good amount of the yarn and surprisingly have quite a bit left, considering how far along I am. But I wanted to be really cautious with my not running out of yarn and placement so I am rolling dice but I think you'll understand I don't I didn't want to put too much of one color in and not have enough for the the set like later on in the rows so I ended up actually casting on the full length again so I ended up doing uh, I think it was just a backwards loop cast on to be honest um, the full length again so that my length of my rows are getting shorter again. I also felt like for me this is a really nice way of working when you're midway through a project but you've got a big change you have another sort of oh this is exciting so by doing the longer rows first while I've got that extra little bit of inspiration um, and the rows suddenly start getting shorter and shorter and shorter. I feel like it's just a lot more of a gentle ride for me. 
so that also plays a part it's sort of knowing that I would probably get more pleasure out of knitting it this way and I did um, I cast on with my main colour and did one more row back on myself and then I'm just doing dice rolls one with a d10 and one with a d6 so we just call a, a if you're not familiar with dice generally you call it a d for dice and then whatever it is so this is a d10 since it has 10 sides and this is one that I made and actually says this one um, and a d6 so six sided st standard six sided dice this one the d10 I am rolling for what colour and I've written down a list nothing fancy um, including a note for iron shirt for Alex um, so I've got my 10 yarns I actually have two on one of them and that was intentional because I didn't want to put too much of these ones in there however I did take one of them off so that was kind of null and void I've got 10 colours and then I'm rolling this one to determine how many stripes I am doing and I'm not doing the stripes all together I'm doing them divided by a main colour stripe so for the first one I rolled a 1 the second one I rolled a 2 so I've got a row of this ash grey mohair then a, a row of the main colour and then back to the ash grey mohair before swapping onto my lovely hand spun um, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get just a little bit further along and then I'm going to do either a block of all one colour, probably a dark colour, or um, a couple of blocks, one of a dark colour and or two of a dark colour and one big one of this. This is my lovely hand spun. Um, This is one of my favourite spins so far. This was a Felview Fibres um, spin. I'll have it noted down, so I'll put it in the description. Uh, but this was a lovely gift from Mary Louise. I still can't thank you enough. Like, this brings me so much joy, these colours. And I didn't mean to, but this does feel very Woodland Elf, which I'm very much here for. Um, but I love the idea of being able to fold this in a multitude of ways so this will be quite difficult to share on here I think but so that you know if I fold it in half this way I've got half striped half knot this way I'll have none like no colour and then I've got the other way which will have a bit of a block colour and the solid colour so I'm hoping to have a multitude of ways to wear this that each are slightly different depending like I really love the idea of having this way being available to me because then I can wear it with anything but then you know when I'm wearing darker colours and lime green or whatever colours that a lime green goes with this is cool um <laughs> but yeah I'm really happy with the choice of modification I did so I did do German short rows instead of wrap and turn and I am in case you decided for some reason that you wanted to do this the way I have decreased is to brain brawl so to do the decreases I am knitting on the wrong side to three stitches before there's a gap where I'm needing to join this side back to this side and I'm doing a slip slip knit, so slipping two stitches separately knit wise and then knitting them together and then the last stitch before the gap and the first stitch after the gap I am slipping slipping and knitting two together again and then turning around and it's coming out quite lovely um, ooh, this is quite a, quite a big piece of work now And I'm not sure if I shared before, but this is a project that four out of five of us? 
yeah, um, in our D&D &D group actually cast on at the same time. So, yeah, even though we've not been playing to, uh, together the last few weeks, uh, it still feels like I'm getting to spend a bit of time with them quietly when I'm just doing the rows on this. Um, especially since I'm rolling dice, it's just a little bit more... Yeah, it is a really cosy project, it's a really easy project. If you are in need of something, almost like not necessarily totally mindless, because you can put in as much mindful behaviour as you want with it, I think. Um, I do recommend it, it's a very easy, relaxing knit, and it is big, you could... Ooh. Every time now. <laughs> husband um yeah and it would be very easy to 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 knit it much smaller i think it's a lovely option for a sort of a baby blanket gift or surprisingly considering how much knitting's in it it's a lovely project for gift knitting i think especially if you're pre-planning ahead to you know maybe someone's got a big birthday or you know someone who's always really loved a project but you're worried about knitting them a sweater like this is a really nice project and if you are looking to use up oddments there's quite a lot of fun ways you could do striping whether it is with dice or you know planning it out on a computer any any method that you kind of want I feel like this is a good way of using them yeah so I'm very happy with my choices I won't go through every color because like I said there's 10 different yarns here. I might once it's finished, but for now, I think I should stop talking about it, even though that's really warm on my lap. I know that I have actually worked on this a fair amount since last I shared it, but I haven't worked on it for a little while, if that makes sense. I think it's maybe been three, maybe even four weeks. I think three weeks since I last, four weeks maybe, wow, uh, shared about this project. Um, and I don't think I've touched it into, I'm, I'm trying to be really careful, unlike the uh, shawl, this one I'm trying to be careful with the colour placement to, to ensure that I'm happiest with it and so far I'm really happy so I you know I've been trying to do it when my brain's like I can do I can make decisions I can do colour placement now rather than just willy-nilly tee -hee. um <laughs> in here is a again a mixture of yarns I'm not going to go through them um not today Maybe maybe next time we'll we'll share which ones have gone in in particular. Uh, this is the main colour I'm using, so I will share it. This is Kelvin Wallen's Scout in the charcoal grey colourway. Uh, it's a lovely colour. <laughs> it is slightly heathered. And I am using it for the Elf Mail, which is a pattern by Danny Meager. Uh, Danny knits things on Instagram, I believe. I have knit this pattern before. I really love it. Uh, the second version I knitted, I did give away because it just wasn't... It was probably actually more my colours, but just not more my colours that I choose to wear. Um, my original one, I love so much. I'll put in another picture of it. If you've been here, you might have seen it. I do tend to wear it quite a bit. Um, but this version, I think, initially when I spoke about it last week, uh, this pink bothered me. Uh, it's fine. Uh, I did carry on knitting as, as I was going to and as other people have said, and I'm really loving the way this is going and seeing it again. I might be inspired to pick it back up and um, not prioritise it, but just pick it back up today, um, maybe while I'm editing and put in some rounds on it. 
It is a top down raglan jumper. So you are increasing around the shoulders and the body. Wow. So on either edge, either edge of the arm and either edge of the shoulders. So you have these four sets, these four sets of increases. These ones are particularly lovely, I have to say. The detail that uh, Danny designed to put on them is, I love it. I will, I would love to use this in the future. This is really making me smile today. Um, and the, a lot of people, I say a lot of people, I was recently on a knit night. I'm trying to take part in more of those. Um, I've missed talking about knitting in a more, yeah, I've just missed talking about knitting a bit. Um, but I, I was asked, and just to, this isn't colour work, so you'd, if you're someone who has been nervous to try colour work, I recommend giving it a go and just trying these things. Remember, it's yarn, we can rip it out. But if you're someone that wants to try something that simulates colour work a little bit, this is a great way to go. You only have one colour per round, um, and you definitely don't have to have so many colours in it, you just, you, it's recommended for two colours. I've just used everything because I, I wanted to see if I could. I know that as a person I'm generally not someone that's into too much chaos. Like, I, I, I mentioned it quite a bit now, but I quite like black and a pop or two colours. I'm quite... I'm happy to wear colour, but I'm a bit fickle with it, I guess. Maybe not fickle, just know what I love. I think you understand what I'm trying to say. Um, but this has made me realise that actually I can be a bit more playful, but in a way that reflects me rather than just being playful and never wanting to wear it, if that makes sense. Um, so I have, since I last shared, divided for the body. And yeah, I've done three inches maybe, two and a half inches on the body. And I'm, like I said, I'm really happy with how it's looking. I did say last time I knitted this that I might work the short rows in pattern. But I actually still don't mind how it looks in stockinette. So I didn't bother doing it, but if you're someone that's interested in that sort of thing and and that would bother that might be something to note but otherwise such a fun pattern to knit really engaging and <gasps> now we're fine <laughs> that was dramatic for no reason um yeah i don't really know what else to say i haven't been knitting on it so i've not really got any Think to say other than that when I was I was really enjoying it and it has just been quite dark and grey and overcast and I do want to work on this in either proper daylight or a proper light and actually in this room because it goes so orange it's not like nighttime lighting is not normally the best for this sort of project but yeah a really nice one, really fun pattern to knit, and a beautifully written pattern too. And finally I did want to share a bit of spinning that I finished. Now this one was chaos and kind of intentionally, and I say kind of because it was, and then I got spinning and started spinning it how I would spin normally. And then I forgot or remembered that I was trying to be really relaxed and to create a almost an arty yarn and uh, and then finished it in that style. So it's all over the shop. Um, so it's not my best spin, but.
this really reminds me of my friend Yannicka, if you're here. I think this is, if you fancy this yarn, I'll save it for you when we're in, in Edinburgh. Um, but it is, it's Chaos Yarn. Um, but it was really nice to try um, and spin this way rather than my my body instinctively and I don't know I don't know where that comes from but it instinctively wants to to be consistent I guess it's actually quite a lot harder for me to just let it be I don't know what that says about me <laughs> um but yeah so it was quite fun to be conscious of that but I have to say I am definitely going back to my normal spinning style and I have started spinning another project and I will grab grab it quickly but before I do um I just wanted to share this this fiber was from one of my lovely friends who actually make makes my really lovely um needle case um and the yarn is from Celie McWheely is right. <laughs> and it was a merino British wool and silk blend. Um that, that I, I use this is actually from another item. But lovely Hannah was never going to spin them, so they gave it to me and I've really enjoyed the process. And Hannah actually designed and made the needle case that I use. Um, I have one which was a stereo stereotype. I have one that was a prototype and then I have this which is slightly different I think, just the tiniest bit different from the final final thing. Um, and I have one for my wooden needles and one for these ones and I really love it. Um, and it's starting to age and wear nicely. Um, I don't know if I've shared this here before, but uh, the best thing about it is that the needles don't fall out. I've only ever had cases where the needles do fall out. And also, considering how much is in here, it you know but that's the short ones moving but as soon as you do that they'll be back in place um so yeah i really love this thing and i guess i should share it while i it is something that i use every every day and i should i should have weighed this before i started but I am just going to do a single ply and then probably cake it and do a two ply from it um, so that I'm just not wasting any. But this is a lovely bat from Skein of Dreams that I received in my lovely little advent calendar swap we did and it's peace fleece. I can't believe I'm spinning with a bit of peace fleece. I have spoken uh, a fair bit about Peace Fleece in the past, but if you don't know about them, I do recommend going and having a little look at their story. Their yarn is gorgeous. I have... I do apologise. <laughs> I really am not at my peak. Um, but they have a lovely story and I've knitted with it once before for a big project and I really loved it. I knitted a drop shoulder jumper that I wear loads. It has lasted so well. There's a bit of mohair in there, so you know that I'm gonna um, love it. And yeah, it's just, I, w I don't ever, I never expected that I would get to use it. And that's the you know, absolute truth and let alone have a little bit to spin. And I'm really enjoying it. This has lots of neps that, Again, 
finding it like not off-putting but instinctively want to pick them out <laughs> and I'm trying my hardest not to um and I do think I may be spinning it a little slightly higher twist than I'm 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 putting a lot more twist into it than they do at Peace Fleece I haven't done much of it so far so I can't share quite how I'm feeling about it The process is very enjoyable and I'm trying my best to add a little bit more spinning back into my my days because I kind of missed it and I felt like I had quite a lot of knitting projects to get well I had one project that I needed to do quite quickly um, and then suddenly everything it's just all been knitting so bringing a bit of spinning back into my life has been very nice and uh, it's even more special when it's, you know, been sent to you. Yeah, and it's just, it's very special. I'm really enjoying it. And I think I might put this into a hat with a... We'll see. I'm not going to say anything just yet because I'm not quite sure what it's going to become. But it will become a two-ply yarn. So I think it is about time that I sign off. I think I should probably edit from the sofa today and do a little bit of knitting. I hope that however you are feeling that you make yourself feel just a tiny bit better, whether that's by nutrition, hydration, calling a friend, um, cuddling, cuddling a familiar little kitten <laughs> or whatever your familiar might be um yeah I've got lots of projects on the go or projects in my head that I would love to try um both knitting related and not um and I'm quite excited about them I just it's always just the time and starting them and all of those things but I hope you do if you are making things that it is bringing you some joy don't forget to love each other and I hope to see you again very soon a mountain dwarf, come on.
smash that like button. It's on the link. Uh, it's on the link.